now that we have uh, covered uh, all that we need in terms of angle measures and what we mean by angles, we're ready to start defining a set of mathematical functions that will um, be acting on or mapping from this set of angle measures. So we're going to take functions and the numbers we're going to plug into them are typically going to be representative of angles. So we want to take functions of angles of 30 degrees, of 60 degrees, of pi over 6 radians, etc. So in this lecture we're going to define our basic set of trigonometric functions. Now in trigonometry there are a couple of different ways for us to start the process of defining a trig function. We can either begin with triangles and describe them in terms of the relationships of the sides of a right triangle or we can start with the unit circle. Now depending on what kind of applications you're going to be using either one has its valid uh, uh, advantages. However for this course um, we are going to be starting with the unit circle and building from there to develop the concept of the mathematical functions that are the trig functions. And then we will come back in a later um, set of lectures and look at the trig functions in terms of the right triangle trigonometry. So we'll have a whole set of lectures dealing with triangles. We're going to start with um, the definition of trig functions based on the unit circle. So first of all, what is the unit circle? The unit circle is basically just a circle um, with unit length radius. So the unit circle is the circle whose radius is 1 and it's centered at the origin. Okay, So consider we're going to take any angle theta and we're going to put it in standard position so that its initial side is corresponding with the positive x-axis and then we're going to let the terminal side fall wherever it may. Okay, And it creates an arc when it intersects the unit circle. Okay. If theta is in radians, notice that the length of that arc on the outside is in fact t. Because remember, um, s arc length is equal to r theta. So in our case, t is our arc length, r is 1, and theta is the angle in there. So we have that t theta and t are the same thing. Okay, so we're going to define the trig functions based on the coordinates of the terminal side. That is where the terminal side intersects the unit circle. So consider our unit circle and let's let t be some real number. All right, then let x comma y be the point that you get if you travel t distance along the outside of that circle or equivalently if you have theta is an angle right where that angle intersects the unit circle is the coordinate x comma y okay remember you're starting from standard position the sine function which when we write the name of it fully out is s-i-n-e the sine function is written as sine of t, S-I-N is, we're going to use three letters to represent these functions, sine of t is the y coordinate of that point. The sine function of this angle is the y coordinate of the point where it intersects the unit circle. Okay, The cosine function, which we write as cos of t or cosine of theta, is the x coordinate. Okay, Sine is the y coordinate, x is, sorry, cosine is the x-coordinate. All right, and then we've got um, four more. We're going to have six total basic trigonometric functions. We have a tangent function. The tangent function is the ratio y over x, as long as x is not zero. If x is zero, tangent theta is undefined. Okay. So sine is the y-coordinate, cosine is the x-coordinate, tangent is y over x. And then we have what are called, sometimes referred to as the reciprocal functions, which we'll talk about why they mean that in a later portion of this lecture. But the uh, cosecant function is the reciprocal, that is 1 over y, 1 over the y-coordinate. The secant function is 1 over x and the cotangent function 
notice is just the reciprocal of the tangent, so it's x over y. Okay? So again, these functions are sometimes called the reciprocal functions. So we've now created six functions that are defined based on the coordinate where if you travel a length t along the outside of a unit circle or you put a measurement of the angle in radians where it intersects the unit circle gives us the x and y we'll call y the sine x the cosine y over x the tangent 1 over y is the cosecant 1 over x is the secant and x over y is the cosecant and now we're going to build from there a whole set of mathematical applications from those simple definitions of the trig functions. So we can actually go ahead and evaluate. If we knew the coordinates of the point on the outside of the um, circle, we could find the value of all of our trig functions. So let's t let t be a real number, and let's just say it so happens that on my unit circle, if you go to the point negative one half and square root of three over two, which happens to be right here. Okay, again, this is a unit one, so that would make this negative one. So we're looking at the angle or the distance along the outside if we travel from there to there. Okay, that's my t. They don't actually even tell us what t is, although we could figure it out if we wanted to. We don't need to know. t is that angle. Um, or that distance along the outside. So how do we find the value of all the six trig functions? Well, we can just go back to the definition. Sine of t is the y-coordinate, square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of t is the x-coordinate, negative 1 half. Tangent of t would be y over x, so square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Um, invert and multiply, so square root of 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. The 2's cancel, I end up with negative square root of 3 is the value of my tangent. Okay, let's do the um, cosecant, cosecant of t. Remember cosecant of t is 1 over the y, square root of 3 over 2, so that gives me 2 over square root of 3, or going back to my algebra, we can rationalize that denominator we get two square roots of three over three. Secant of t is one over the x-coordinate, so one over negative one-half, or negative two over one, which is just negative two. And then cotangent of t is y over x, so you, sorry, x over y. So take the x-coordinate, which was negative one-half, divided by the y-coordinate, which was square root of 3 over 2. That's negative 1 half times 2 over square root of 3. The 2's cancel. I get a negative 1 over square root of 3, or reducing that negative square root of 3 over 3 when I rationalize the denominator. And those are the values of my six trig functions. All I needed was the coordinates of the point on the outside of the unit circle. So let's think through this. We've got some angles that we actually know their coordinates on the outside of the unit circle immediately. Those are what we call the quadrantal angles, the angles whose terminal side, when in standard position, ends up in the, uh, on the axis, right? So for example, zero degrees. Zero degrees has an angle that starts here and ends here, right? So if you're looking at the unit circle, what are the coordinates of that point right there on the unit circle? We know that's a distance one, so the coordinates of that point are one comma zero. All right, so one comma zero means that cosine of, sorry, why did I start with cosine? Let's try that again. How about we start with the first one, which is sine of theta. Is the y coordinate, which means sine of zero is zero. All right, in fact, let me write it that way. Sine of zero degrees or zero radians is equal to zero. 
what is sine or is cosine of zero. Well, it's the x coordinate, so cosine of zero is one. Tangent of zero would be zero over one, y over x, which is still zero. So sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, tangent of zero is zero. What would be the cosecant of zero? Well, because it's one over the y, that has to be undefined. You cannot divide by zero. Secant of zero is one over one, which is just one. And then last of all, cotangent of zero is one, which is the x-coordinate over zero, which means it is also undefined. All right, so we can keep going with this. If we go up to this point up here, that's the 90 degrees, or pi over two, the coordinates of that point are 0, 1. So sine of pi over 2, or sine of 90 degrees, would be the y-coordinate of that. You get 1. Cosine pi over 2 is the y-coordinate, so that's 0. And tangent of pi over 2 would be y over x, so you get an undefined value for that one. Cosecant of pi over 2 would be the reciprocal of the y, so you end up with 1 over 1, or 1. Secant of pi over 2, 1 over 0 gives me an undefined value. That's 1 over the x-coordinate. And then cotangent of pi over 2 is x over y, 0 over 1, which is 0. So 1, 0 undefined, 1 undefined, 0. And we can keep going. So let me do sine of pi, cosine of pi, and tangent of pi, and cosecant of pi, uh, co uh, sorry, secant of pi, and cotangent of pi. Now what's the coordinates of that point? That point over here, because I'm going to the left, is going to be negative 1, comma 0, which means I get 0, negative 1, and then 0 again, because 0 over negative 1 is 0. Cosecant gives me an undefined value, because 1 over the y coordinate is undefined. 1 over 0, undefined. Uh, you get 1 over negative 1, which is still negative 1 for this one, and you get another undefined here, because you're doing negative 1 over 0. So the last of the quadrantal angles would be the one that ends down here. So we had this here, and now we're going all the way around to there. And the coordinates of that point are 0, comma, negative 1, because I'm going down. So let's do sine of 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2, uh, tangent of 3 pi over 2, cosecant of 3 pi over 2, secant 3 pi over 2, and cotangent of 3 pi over 2. All right, hopefully this is getting a little bit quicker for you. Sine of that is going to be the y coordinate, so negative 1. Cosine is 0. And then tangent is undefined because negative 1 over 0, you can't divide by 0. Cosecant of 3 pi over 2, that's 1 over the y coordinate, so negative 1. 1 over the x coordinate would be undefined because the x coordinate is 0. And then um, 0 over negative 1, x over y, gives me 0. And those are their six trig function values for all four of our quadrantal angles. All right, let's do just a, a couple more um, because it's important that you're able to not only find the coordinates of the point, but make sure that you know where that angle actually um, is. So I've asked you to find sine of 3 pi. So first thing you got to do is think about where 3 pi is. Draw that on the unit circle. So to start with the unit circle, and let's draw the angle that starts here. Oh, apparently that makes it erase. So the angle that starts here and goes around 3 pi. Well, remember, one full rotation is 2 pi. So if that's 2 pi, then 3 pi would mean to go one more pi, which is another half rotation. Excuse me. So to right there, which means that we're looking at this point. Now, because this is a unit circle, 
we know that the coordinates of that point are going to be negative 1, comma, 0. We're going to the left. And sine is the y coordinate, so sine of 3 pi is 0. That's what you got to do. Um, cosine of negative 270, you'd again start by drawing the unit circle and then go negative 270. So that's um, negative 270 means go clockwise from the starting position of the positive x-axis. 270 degrees gets me to right here, which means I'm at this point. So my coordinates on the unit circle, unit meaning radius 1, would be 0, 1. And so that one is also 0. Doesn't mean the answer is always zero, but you know how to find it now, right? You draw the angle, find the coordinate, and then you've got everything you need to know in order to find the six trig functions, or any one of them that you're asked for. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to cover, and this is coming up in a later lecture, is can we do other angles? So remember whenever we covered um, 60, 30 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, we've done 90, but um, 135 degrees. In fact, why don't we look at all the special angles that we've um, we've already graphed on our circles and see if we can't find the trig function values for those.